Hi guys, Sonic here. Uh, I just want to first apologise for the delay in this video. Uh, I did sell to make around to doing it months ago, and now it's ended up being like a year or two. The excuse is um, VirtuBox, which is what I used last time as my guest machine, was fast. Now it's not. Uh, the mouse and keyboard input was so unresponsive, just made everything so slow, and the videos end up being really long. I'm Cortana. Oh, hi Cortana. How are you doing? Um, well, I'll get to you in a minute, right? I was going to mute you for a sec because you annoy me. Shh. Right, anyway. Um, yeah, so now I'm using work, a VM workstation and it's not far off having like a second physical machine in front of me. Um, I'm going to do a few separate videos, but this video here is literally the process of everything. But I'm going to be doing a video on, for people that have actually got Windows pre-installed on a solid state drive and might have a hard drive lying around that they want to do this guide on. I'm also going to be showcasing the batch file that I won't be using this guide because I'm just going to try and do everything manually to show people what everything does. Uh, and I'm going to do uh, another little mini video on how to re-enable the admin account before Windows boots up in the event that the hard drive disconnects or something or reverts a setting. And I'm just going to literally just do a, another video overall detailing the entire lot really. So yeah, stay tuned for them. Anyway. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a clean install of Windows. Uh, I'm actually going to be using SysPrep. Um, so to get into this, at the moment we're on a thing called the OOB or the Out of Box Experience. Now to get past this and into SysPrep, you literally just do Control Shift F3. In fact, let's just make this screen a little bit bigger. Let's try and scale up. Um, Basically, the reason we're doing this is to go into the built-in administration account. By default, it's disabled and it's hidden. But by going into SysPrep, we're actually enabling it and it's installed in itself to the C drive. So in the event that the hard drive does dis get disconnected, we've still got a local full admin account on our system drive alongside where Windows is installed to actually manage everything. And like I said, with the guide that details how to enable the admin account via command prompt before Windows boots is an absolute lifesaver. Like I said, that's going to have to be in another video because otherwise this one will be too long. Um, the other reason we're doing SysPrep and using the administration account is we, so we can remove bloatware and set a default start menu and make some visual tweaks and just literally just set up the machine, hence why it's called SysPrep for preparation. So once we've logged into this, um, We've literally got a few files on our media drive, which is our USB memory stick that we install Windows off to begin with. And then copy a few things across, run the sysprep, which is this little bit window here. So we're actually going to come back to this later on. So we're going to press cancel. We're going to plug in our memory stick. And VMware is now going to ask me to want to connect it to a virtual machine. Yes, please. Now I'm going to go to File Explorer. A little bit slow, but it's better than VirtualBox. So there's our little command pro, um, batch file, but we're not going to use that. Everything is going to be situated in the files folder. First thing we're going to do is copy unattend to our C drive. So open up a new window, so file, new window, or just do start and E, uh, which is actually just made a duplicate copy. Anyway, so go to this PC, local disk C, and uh, control V in there. Next thing is copy layout modification. This is our blank start menu. Uh, I'm going to copy this to users and then default. But if you can't see default, you can go to view, hidden items, default, app data, local, Microsoft, Windows, shell, and paste it in there. And then you can close that window. Next step is to remove the bloatware. Now to do this, we, go to, we can go to open. Anything that's got a hashtag in front of it is not going to get removed. So sticky notes and OneNote are going to be kept alongside Microsoft Paint. But so if I stick a hashtag in front of, it, of something, it will get bypassed essentially because it's just a comment. If you actually want to run this, you actually go right click, go to run with PowerShell. And then usually you get a little prompt to say, do you want to execute this uh, file? I think you usually press Y for Yankee. For yes to all when it starts to show up. Let's try hitting on the keyboard there. Up, let's click yes, enter, 
and then I just run through its little things. You will get some red text to say it can't remove certain stuff. That's because the overall list that I did is just literally the entire list. So some stuff may not be removed because it can't without breaking the Windows operating system and causing problems in the future. So once that's done, um, PowerShell will close itself. Almost sent out. I think I've done it in alphabetical order, so Zoom video is the last one. Uh, next step is to go to this PC, local disk C, Windows, uh, type SYS on your keyboard to get jump down the menu, go to system 32, do SYS again, and you should jump to sysprep, open that up, go into the address bar, click in there so it's highlighted, control C or right click and go to copy, go to start or uh, right click on start and go to run, or you can do start and R on the keyboard and type in CMD, click it, enter, right click in here to paste, and then you want to do backslash sysprep dot exe, and then space, and then it's a forward slash, and we're doing a parameter here, so it's unattend, and then it's colon, and then the place where we actually, or the path, where we play, placed our unattend XML file, so it's C, colon backslash because we're doing a path now and it's unattend dot xml and then it's forward slash shut down and then fingers crossed here we are it brings up this box again um we can just leave it as they are whilst this is shut down we are going to now attach our hard drive of course i'm using a virtual machine here so i'm going to be attaching a two gig hard drive for demonstration purposes so you get that, you get a just moment, and then it will reboot, or in this case, shut down. It's come out full screen, so I'm getting into my preferences. And then once that has finally shut down, I think there it is, uh, edit virtual machine settings, hard disk, add, next, SATA. This will be the same as you just guys, just literally plugging in a hard drive uh, use existing hard drive I've got one called data finish click OK power the machine back up and then when we log in uh, the unattend file is basically like an automated um, file that basically skips at oob window or out of box experience and inside that I've actually set up the administration account we were using previously with a auto login and a default password which is password so in a minute we should actually go through some screens it'll say welcome to windows but I think it's doing it now actually here we are this just a moment would be where the oob would be now so you've got this bit this is now actually doing the login in process of our admin account doing the auto login once we've actually logged into that we are going to change the password to something else for security uh, security kind of precautions and then we're going to set our well we're going to initialize the hard drive because the hard drive hasn't been set up yet then we can do our registry tweak to actually move our user profile area over to our new location paying attention to the drive letter which is the important bit and then we're going to use command prompt to add an additional admin account so it shouldn't be too long now unfortunately like I said there with command prompt uh, this is a limitation of Windows Home for some reason logging in as the administration account as the first instance um, for some reason you can't add any other account via settings or control panel or local users and groups it seems to be disabled because it's Windows 10 home if you're on pro and enterprise edition you don't get that problem so once you get to leaving everything to us let's just put this in full screen so everything's, everything is a little bit clearer yeah like I said it's a bit of a limitation to the home edition of Windows so we have to use the net user commands to add another account so once we logged in, 
I'll prove that we're now logged in as our administration account. So we look, have our, our little man it says administrator. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, if we go to File Explorer, you can see, go to, go to this PC, that's our installation media, or one of them. Um, you can see we do not have our hard drive. And to fix that, if you right click on the start menu, go to disk management. Uh, and then you want to initialize the disk, GPT. Uh, if you've got a hard drive over 2.2 terabytes, you want to select GPT. If you've got a two terabyte or lower, you can get away with selecting MBR. But in either case, uh, GPT works for either of them really. Uh, once you've got that, you've got an unallocated drive and a right click, go to new simple volume, go through this little wizard, we've got two gig. Uh, pay attention to the drive that you're giving it. So next, it's got an E, leave it as NTFS, keep that as quick format. I'm gonna name this data, next, finish. Close that down. Now we can do our registry tweak. So we do start and R, uh, and then do reg edit. So we'll cap lock on. And then it's in H key local machine software. Let's just make the screen a bit bigger. So this is going to expand. Microsoft. And then it is Windows NT. Current version. And then it will be profile list. If I just quickly expand this, you can see administration account is on C and it is there nice and solidly. If we didn't do the sys prep and log in as our administration account right now using the unattend file, this essentially wouldn't be there, which is bad news. So logging in as the admin account and getting this done and out of the way and keeping this on the C drive is nice and safe now. So if we go back up to this the family of this, this uh, tree here or the key, we want to change profiles directory from percentage or sorry percentage system drive percentage to our new drive let which is e and then colon backslash users and i'll also change public usually as well change that to e colon backslash users backslash public click ok leave program data uh because that's quite a big folder and that usually is on part and parcel with program files 86 and program files and default do not want to move that. Close that down. Uh, to now make our new user account, you want to open up command prompt again. So start an R, do CMD, hit return. Now I'll do net user, uh, and then it's forward slash add, and then the name of the account. So I'm going to do Sonic, and then sh a space, and then it's shift and eight for the asterisk, hit enter, and it's now going to prompt for a password. I'm just going to put in something like hello. It asked twice to confirm it. Uh, that's now a normal user account. To add it to the administration account group, uh, we do net local group administrators. And then it's the name of the account we just made and then forward slash add done. And then we'll close out of this. I'm actually going to log off. You can see our new account says sign out. Uh, go back to the start screen or the login screen. You can see two accounts. Click on Sonic. And we just set our password as hello. And because that layout modification XML file we had earlier on, that literally blanks out the start menu. So we've got a blank start. So it hasn't got to load all them massive tiles in. So hopefully this should be done in a few seconds. Usually the second time is a lot quicker. So they're almost there, and then we're logged in. Edge will pop up, unfortunately, but it's only one time. And you can customize all this. I'm going to do this in a separate video, like I mentioned earlier. Um, going through all of that. So we've got Sonic. We'll just check there. And to check if it's actually worked on the hard drives, go to this PC. You can see we've used a bit of the data already. Users, public, and Sonic. Check at this PC, just make sure administration account still there, users, administrator, and we are pretty much done. Apart from, we now need to disable the administrator account. So open up start and R again on this account, do CMD. You'll notice we haven't actually got privileges down here now. So to run CMD as an administrator, you can do control shift and then enter, and then you'll get user account control. Or if you want to do it the other way, start, uh, type in CMD, 
you need to right click, run as administrator, or just go to this little pane here. And that's a very similar command, it's net user administrator. And just hit that and you can see account active is yes. If you press up on the keyboard again and then do space and then do active, which I think it's forward slash active, no spaces here, colon, and then no, and then press up on the keyboard twice to go back to the previous command and check it again. Account active, no, nope. close out of that. And then sign it out. And now look at the login screen. You'll see there is only one account and that'd be mine. So go click on here and that is now our only account. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be doing all my separate videos detailing the other bits and doing like a kind of overall video kind of explaining everything else. But anyway, I've tried to keep this video as short as possible. Hopefully it's as, well, it's as good or even better than the video that I've been saying I've been waiting to do for a long time and I'm hopefully Someone's had some good use of this. Anyway, hope you enjoy it and I hope it's been useful. Sonic out.